This next staining procedure is called the capsule stain. Now the capsule stain is going to be different from everything else we did. Remember all along I've said make your smear, heat fix it, then stain it. Throw that out the window. This is the first staining procedure that we're doing where you do not heat fix. Okay? This one in the flagella stain we don't heat fix. So we're going to allow them to air dry um, rather than, and we're not going to fix them at all. Okay, so this in the flagella stain can take a little bit longer in the waiting period um, before staining because we're not going to, um, well, it shouldn't take much longer. But some procedures like the flagella stain, you want to get started on that. That's on another video. So now we're going to do the capsule stain. Capsules are um, a polysaccharide layer around the cell. Now it's a sugary layer, okay, but what it is, is a capsule is a form of glycocalax, and what it is very highly organized, and it can be a very, 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 very thick layer. Um, if you look at a picture of some bacteria, it can be like double the size of the bacteria. Some in some fungus are very, very large. So what the capsule does is it adds to the virulence of a bacteria, increasing the degree of pathogenicity because a capsule resists phagocytosis. Recall that phagocytosis is your white blood cells chewing up um, foreign materials like bacteria and destroying them. But if it has a capsule, it resists that process, so it evades your immune system, giving it more of an ability to be able to penetrate your cells and cause disease. So having a capsule adds to the virulence. Having an endospore can also add to that. So we're going to see as we go along in the semester, there's many things that are different about each bacteria. Whether it's gram positive or negative is one thing. And then you start adding endospores, you start adding capsules, and you start having bacteria with different um, pathogenic abilities, so more virulence. So with the capsule stain, it's going to be different. And um, so we're going to start from the beginning. Okay, so I'm using this different Bunsen burner. It's different than some of the ones we've seen in class. I prefer these. You get a nice blue cone there. Now with the capsule stain, the first thing it says to do is add um, a few drops of crystal violet. So this case actually drop the crystal violet on there. Don't use the loop. And so the crystal violet was the primary stain of the um, gram stain, but we're using it here as also a primary stain, but instead of putting it on the fixed smear, you put the crystal violet on the slide before you put the bacteria on. Okay, a couple drops should be fine. We don't want to overdo it, okay? One is probably plenty, okay? Then it says to add three loopfuls of the bacteria. So, and, it, and you have to do it aseptically. So if I use one loop, I'm going to sterilize it, I'm going to add a loopful. Then I'd have to sterilize it again. So I do, if I'm all about efficiency, so why don't we just sterilize three loops at one time and have them ready? As long as you don't set them down, they're gonna still be sterile, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. I'm just gonna sterilize all three of them together if I can get them the same. Now, make sure they all get red, okay? All right, so we're gonna sterilize all three of those at the same time. I'm just gonna put them off to the side to let them cool off, but as long as they don't touch anything, they're okay. Now the bacteria that we're using for this, there's lots of different bacteria that form capsules. Um, we're going to use a couple of different ones. Um, there may be a change in your lab manual due to the fact that we don't have all the bacteria necessary. So now those should be pretty cool. And I'm not going to grab one at a time. How about that? Okay. So I'm going to grab this one first. It's already sterilized. I have my bacteria. Remember you can hold the glass and do a little bit of tapping to get a whirlpool going to make sure you get a good sample. Remember grabbing it with your pinky, running it through the hottest part of the flame, then we go in and grab it. Gonna run it through the flame. Go ahead and just set it down. So I've done my first loop full. Okay. to the side. I have the next one. You want a good sample? I'm actually not sure about that crystal violet on there. I'm going to have to wash that off. 
on this third one. See, this way I'm not waiting each time for it to cool off. And three loop balls. Okay, ooh, fried that, okay. <laughs> I didn't stain, all right. So now we're done with the Bunsen burner because we're not gonna heat fix. Okay, so we can turn that off now. Now this is also different from what, anything else we've done in class. Basically we wanna take this bacteria, this um, crystal violet with the bacteria in it, and we wanna spread it. So you're just gonna take your slide and you're gonna spread the, the smear. So just on one side of this smear, just gently drag a clean slide across the top. Okay? I have way too much crystal violet on there. So maybe when you go to do it, you use one, one drop of crystal violet. Another thing I might suggest is start over on the edge of the slide so that you have more room to drag. Now this has bacteria on it, so I'm going to want to put it into my waste beaker. Okay? I don't want to just um, leave it. All right? Put it right there for now because I do not have a waste beaker here. So it says to allow this to dry for, I believe it says five to seven minutes. So it may, it probably won't completely dry, but we're going to just let it air dry. So you're going to wait five to seven minutes. We're not going to heat fix. We're not going to touch it. We're just going to let it be. So after that dries, and like I said, it may not completely dry, just wait the seven minutes. Okay. In this case, you're not going to rinse. So we don't have a water bottle for that. We are going to rinse with copper sulfate. Copper sulfate, the solution that we use, is going to be a little bit darker blue than this, um, but it's going to be a blue color. Okay? This is your rinsing and decolorizing all in one. Okay? So I waited my seven minutes. So just with all other decolorizing or washers, I'm just going to drip it on there until most of the color comes out. We've all done before. Okay, I remember I didn't allow mine to sit for seven minutes. And we blot dry. There's no rinsing with water, no heat fixing. Now when we blot dry, extra, extra, extra gentle because this is not fixed. Okay, so if we blot too much, we're gonna end up with nothing. Okay, so I'm just gonna very gently blot that and I am going to set it off to the side and let it air dry all by itself because I don't want to over blot it. I don't want to mess up what I've just done. Okay. Now with this procedure, if you realize, if you remember with um, the simple staining, the bacteria have a negative charge and therefore a positively charged stain is good for them. So when we put that crystal violet on, it stained the wall of the bacteria and the um, capsule. Okay. It stained the whole thing. The capsule itself, although all the capsule itself does not have a charge. So the capsule, um, you will not need to, um, the capsule will decolorize with the copper sulfate. So on this stain, it's kind of a negative stain, but it's not really staining the slide itself. So what happens is, is when you wash it with the copper sulfate, the um, crystal violet is removed from the capsule, but not from the cell. So what you'll end up with is a dark purple cell with a light, light capsule around it. And then a bit of the background will pick up some of the color. And so you'll have a light background, a dark bacteria, and then a light, either clear, whitish, maybe light blue halo around the bacteria. It's a really neat thing to see when you do it right.